Hey, what's up? It's Thomas here. I hope you're doing well. Today, I'm going to share with you my top five reasons why I switched over to playing a headless guitar full time. And although headless guitars have become much more of the norm these days, I still see the occasional comments such as, I could never play a headless guitar, insert reason, insert reason. So I thought it'd be fun to share the main reasons why I made this switch. And also, we're going to have a battle, a headless to head battle between this vintage gem and a modern headless Kiesel. We're going to play the same riff back to back and see how they stack up. Before we get into that, tomorrow night is the return of my online stream, Shred Club. If you've never been on a Shred Club stream before, then you're in for a bit of a wild ride. It's going to be streaming right here on YouTube at 8 p.m. UK time. So I'll leave the link right below the like button so you can check that out and join in on a Shred Club stream. It's going to be a blast. I will see you there. For now, let's switch over to a headless guitar and get started. So the number one reason, comfort. For me, I made the switch to playing headless guitars at a time that I felt like I was battling guitar shapes, more specifically RGs. By chance, I, I got to try my first headless guitar and I kind of remember that feeling and didn't really think too much of it because I didn't really think I could actually make the switch to playing a headless guitar in all honesty. Probably like a lot of people, where's the freaking headstock, right? I remember the first main headless guitar that I got to try. It was a Kiesel Osiris that they sent out for me to check out. Literally within a couple of minutes of playing that Osiris, I was like, that's exactly what I've been looking for. This is a big change for me, going from a guitar collection with, with a headstock to a headless. This is massive. This is a big life-changing decision here, but it was also a decision that I knew I would deeply regret if I didn't make because it allowed me to play at my potential or certainly a lot closer to my maximum potential a lot easier. And a lot of the licks that I go for, I, um, I just put myself out there, you know, I put myself right on the very edge of my ability sometimes and anything that can give me that advantage, I'm going to take it, believe me. So whether it's pickup strings, picks, anything that can give me that little advantage, I'm going to take it. But I felt like, you know, these guitars really did allow me to hit that maximum potential a lot easier. It's just really inspiring, but really comfort is the number one reason really easy to get into different positions, you know, standing up with a strap on. Um, the second reason is tone. I switched to playing headless guitars. Around the time that I was tracking the McLaughlin and Hutch Riding Out album, and I remember like getting it out of the box and feeling, yes, this feels great, but what's it gonna sound like when we plug it in? Is, is it gonna sound smaller? Is it gonna sound tinnier? Is it gonna sound you know, different to what I'm used to, but it was quite the opposite. Just because the guitars themselves are usually a little bit more compact and don't have a headstock, obviously the neck is 25.5, it's a full length scale, you know, neck, it's nothing, it's not like a toy or anything, but they are generally a little bit more compact, right? It quickly became a non-issue as soon as I plugged that guitar in. I just got straight into the tracking and it sounded awesome uh, on, the, on the record. You can really control what type of sound that you get from your guitar. So for me, I really like the sound of Ash Bodies. It's like that next level from like a basswood guitar that I grew up playing with Ibanez. But overall, a smaller guitar like this, it definitely competes with big, Jackson, Charvel, Ibanez, you know, just because they're a little bit more compact absolutely doesn't mean that they don't have the same punch and sustain and everything. In fact, the sustain... <laughs> on a headless guitar is absolutely unreal. It's like crazy how much they resonate and sustain. Third reason is tracking. For me, when I'm sitting here in the studio, I'm on Ableton, I'm on Final Cut, and I'm like, you can see I'm moving around and this guitar, it's not like going this way, it's not falling off me. Let me just give you a quick demo of what that would be like. You know, this is actually a really, really light guitar. Super cool. Did you know it was actually floral gem underneath it, actually? Look at that. That's badass. There's a full video on this guitar if you want to see that. So if you want to geek out, grab a coffee, uh, check out my guitar playlist. If you're tracking with a guitar with a headstock, I mean, first of all, I let go. It's it's diving. It's 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 
it doesn't want to sit there whilst I'm keyboard and mouse. It's like, it's, it's going for it. You know that feeling when you turn around and you boosh, boosh, and you're reaching down for an overdrive to do something, bang, boosh, boosh, headstock hits the desk. Well, with a headless guitar, that just doesn't happen. They just sit like that all the time. Super comfy. I can edit, I can go back and forwards. Am I crazy? I don't know. But for me, that's an absolute win. Number four, tuning stability. These guitars stay in tune like crazy. If you put some fresh strings, not just my signature keys will hear the MCR6X, but any guitar, you know, in my collection that is a headless guitar and has the Kiesel Hipshot trem, the tuning stability on live streams and tracking situations is immense. It's going to be right in there. It's the first time I've played today, so it's a little bit sloppy. I'm sorry. Uh, and by the way, if you feel like you pick up the guitar and you're really stuck playing the same licks and sounds over and over, then definitely check out the latest School of McGrock lesson. <laughs> It's all about how to break out of doing that. It's got some really cool tips, some good licks as breakdowns. It's a great way of just freshening up your playing, adding some new sounds right into your arsenal. Playing tracks and just shredding and stuff like that. Not having to stomp on the tune and... Tuning stability, it's a big one. All right, number five on the list is traveling. If you've ever traveled with your guitar, you, you know it can be a bit of a pain. But traveling with a headless guitar, just because they're a little bit more compact here and there's no headstock, it's a breeze. I went to LA, I went with one guitar and I had to collect another guitar from Kiesel. I came back with a couple. And both those guitars, both domestic flights and international flights, straight in the overheads on the flight, no questions asked. They kind of just look like tennis rackets or something like that on your back, you know? In my experience, you're much more likely to be able to bring your guitar on as carry-on as opposed to being forced to check it in. And you know, us guitarists, right? These are our babies, so anytime we can have them a little bit closer to us and not have some lunatic absolutely just flying them everywhere, that's a, that's a win. If you are traveling, um, yeah, headless is like, <laughs> it's like a, it's almost like a travel hack, you know? I don't know if I like that term, but you know what I mean, right? Anyway, let's get to the uh, the bonus questions that came in via Discord. So the first question is from Hellhammer, a recent member of everything that we're doing and a top guy. The first part of his question is regarding tone. Uh, we kind of really had a section about that. The, the next part of the question is all about convincing the haters to try a headless guitar. You know, I don't want to sit here and try and convince anyone to do anything, really. Like, I don't want to try and convince you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, but it would be totally amazing if you did. And I don't want to try and convince you to join School of McGrock, but certain people will, like, they'll resonate with things that I've said and they'll think to themselves, hey, every time I pick up a guitar, yeah, my playing has stagnated a little bit and I feel like I'm playing the same licks over and over. And then they'll take a free trial of School of McGrock and suddenly, bang, they're on a different path. With guitars, that's a little bit of a bigger ask, right? Because, like, not everyone's gonna go out and just buy a guitar and have it delivered and okay yeah i like this or no it's not for me it, it always like completely blows my mind how many people have bought my signature guitar as their first headless guitar which means like they, they're going out on a bit of a limb so yeah i totally get it you know th those guys will just have to have their moment whether it's by chance in a music store and they try a headless and they think oh, actually yeah i i could live with this and actually this is pretty cool, <laughs> and then it's, it kind of grows on them, right? I got a question here from Skybase, aka Patrick, and uh, he's asking about the, the tuning knobs. Um, some of those can be a little bit stiff, a little bit difficult. One thing that some people will find is the first time you start using a headless guitar, because of that compact body, your hand <coughs> might naturally land where the trem is. So you might do that, for example. That muscle memory adjustment probably takes, I mean, it, for me, it was like instant, but you know, guys like Hutch, he's like six foot four, six foot five or something like that, he's a big guy. So he's he's got longer arms, his arms are like used to probably being a little bit in a different place from his like Ibanez stuff, right? So that took him maybe a couple of days 
to, to get used to it. Now, if you see Hodge play a headless, it's like he plays it like absolutely fine. He loves it. That's his go-to guitar. But the first couple of days, he was probably doing what a lot of people do, where they rest their hand in, in the area of the trem, just because the body's a little bit more compact. But the other thing that's a very similar part to the puzzle is tuning. A lot of people, when they first start tuning it, they accidentally bump up and down the trem. You know, when they're trying to tune it. And again, that's a muscle memory thing. And for me, with a Kiesel hip shot trem, like you adjust to that like really, really quickly. Um, and I, I just don't even see that as an issue at all. I can tune the guitars just fine. Uh, I guess it depends on what exact trem system and you know, if they have really, really stiff uh, tuners and then you have to put a bit of extra force then that could be a bit of a pain because effectively whilst you're looking at your tuner you're kind of upsetting the tuning because you're moving the bridge but with the, the hip shot trems they're really really good and they're, they're pretty consistent like all the trems that I have they have the same kind of tension and torque on the actual knobs so the only thing I can think of is like that initial muscle memory where you go to 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 tune and you just do that slightly but now if I do it... You know, it's like easy, no problem at all. Alright, that's it for now. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.